Welcome back to the new car channel. People have always seen what they want to see in those splendid red rock canyons and spires of eastern Utah, the ancient Anasazi saw homeland carved by the hands of divine artisans, while Captain John Makem, exploring the area in 1859 for the U.S. Army Corps of Topographical Engineers, reported back that perhaps no portion of the Earth's surface is more irredeemably sterile, more hopelessly lost to human habitation, for the writer Edward Abbey. The red dust and the burned cliffs and the lonely scale that which lies beyond the end of the roads, was, simply, the most beautiful place on earth, Charlie Stain saw money. Government greenbacks and a lot of them, buried in radioactive deposits somewhere under the layer of chocolate-colored wind gates and stone that is the fossilized remains of Jurassic Age desert dunes. The lanky Texas geologist, who had spent his early years prospecting for oil in South America, just knew that uranium was hidden where nobody was looking. Deep in the same kind of anticlinal or arc-like formations that yielded oil. And in 1950, uranium was going to be the new oil, the Atomic Energy Commission paying out lavishly to those who helped mine a domestic supply. Steen's hunch promised to make him an overnight millionaire. But first he had to find his seam of the soft greenish yellow rock, the atomically buzzing carnitite ore that the local Utah Navajo Indians had grown up for war paint. We thought the new Chevrolet Colorado ZR2, a dedicated off-roader conceived with trophy truck and quad ATV styling cues and coming across as a Raptor light, would prove to be the right ride to trace Steen's 67-year-old trail through the Utah labyrinths. To make things more interesting, we procured a 47,734-door crew cab fitted with the available 2.8-liter inline 4 Duramax turbo diesel. Believing the prodigious 369-pound feet of torque combined with the 20 mpg EPA rated average would produce the perfect uranium prospector. And we were right, with a few caveats. By all accounts, Stain was an extrovert and a bit of a loud mouth. After talking his way out the door of his Texas oil company job in 1950, he packed up his wife, Minnie Lee she preferred ML, and their four boys and bolted for the Colorado Plateau. Lured by a mining journal's report on uranium possibilities in the Four Corners area. He couldn't afford the essential uranium prospector's tool, a Geiger counter, so he placed his faith in his geology training and experience. We picked up our graphite metallics ZR2 in Grand Junction, Colorado, and headed overland, west toward Utah. Besides its lockable front and rear differentials, the ZR2S headline upgrade is its exotic blue and gold Multimatic aluminum bodied, remote, reservoir shocks. They use a spool valve designed basically a cup with a spring-loaded plunger in it that uncovers purposefully shaped relief windows that permit the oil to pass. The deceptively simple design allows very precise bump and rebound tuning the 4,975-pound truck as heavy as it is, thus floats over washboards at 45 miles per hour and sponges up the sudden jolts from the many canyons cut into the trail by runoff. You can cover territory at speeds that would have stunned Stain as we rattled along in his dusty, dilapidated, third-hand jeep. Prowling the tablelands and slot canyons for geologic formations that spoke to him there was little money that first season of prospecting. So Stain set up the family in a rent-free squatter camp consisting of a small travel trailer and an 8x16 foot shack. 
Likewise, we notice that the ZR2S interior has rather shallow door pockets and no great places to park camping clutter. It's the downside to buying a less than full size pickup. Perhaps, but the limited space could be used better. Situated at a jaunty angle on the 615 bed mounted carrier, for example, the Baja style spare looks tough but is a ridiculous waster of acreage. You can't load anything on the tire and only small items squeeze under or around it. Luckily the rack seems to unbolt easily, though no fixtures are supplied underneath to hang the spare in its normal place. After provisioning up in Moab, we headed to Windy Yellow Cat Flat, damp and buggy from the spring runoff. Here, ML and the kids had spent the brisk winter of 1950 to 1951 while Stain burned up the meager budget on drilling equipment and supplies. Our dust plume heading west from State Route 128, we skirted Arches National Park to the south and wove among the low, scrubby bluffs and crumbling cliffs of broken, rust-colored sandstone to a region nicknamed the Poison Strip. A few long-abandoned uranium shafts here were only recently sealed up and fenced off by Utah's abandoned mine reclamation program which strives to keep paying tourists alive by not losing them to Caven's noxious gas. The ZR2 is a handler both off-road and on, with tight steering and excellent body control. The big 31-inch Goodyear Wrangler Duratrack knobbies make surprisingly little noise on pavement while proving to be bear claws in the dust, the sidewalls resistant to scraping from rock ledges. Compared with the standard Colorado, the ZR2S ride hot is 2 inches higher and the track gets shoved out 3.5 inches. Endowing the pickup with balletic stability on the slick rock and crumbled schist. A dial gives you the choice of rear drive, auto all-wheel drive, permanent for high, and for low. Leave it in auto and you may never touch the control again. Maybe to engage the specific off-road throttle transmission mode that makes it simpler to ease the ZR2 over obstacles are tent pitched at Yellow Cat. A jeweled black blanket finely doused the long twilight, the Milky Way at glistening vapor stretching from horizon to horizon. You can imagine the four stained boys scampering in the brush as ML puffed on one of her self-rolled bull durhams and her husband figured out how to pay for yet another broken coring drill. Out of cash, Stain reluctantly abandoned grubs taking to work as a carpenter in Tucson, Arizona, for a year, but the uranium called to him. Eventually he was able to scrape together enough to return to a promising spot in the big Indian wash on the western side of Lisbon Valley, about 30 miles south of Moab. Some uranium had been discovered in this shallow canyon, but it was low quality and the government considered the area a write-off. Standing on an opposite slope of Big Indian, Stain must have read the clearly visible layers of Wingate and chalky Chinle sediments like an archaeologist reads an ancient text. The earth was whispering, and he gambled his remaining dimes on drilling core samples at a site he called Mi Vida, or My Life, a reference to his old prospecting days in South America. When the drill bit broke off yet again, Stain gathered his few samples and dejectedly started the 100-mile drive back to Cisco, Utah, where ML and the kids were set up in a tar paper hubble renting for 15 a month. At Buddy Cowger's gas station in Cisco, the proprietor offered to give Stain's samples a pass with his Geiger counter. When Cowger waved it over one of the black rocks, the needle pegged. 
Stain hadn't recognized Lycora's pitch blend, an even purer form of uranite that early gold prospectors despised because it gummed up their equipment. He took off running toward the family shack, blindly knocking MLS loaded clothesline into the dirt while hooping, we've found it. It's a million dollar lick, it was July 1952. Stain was 32, and tiny Moab was about to be swamped with prospectors we bounced our way up Big Indian Wash. The ZR2S stiff frame soaking up the rocks that have tumbled downhill through the years and the massive potholes that have opened up in the largely forgotten Steens Road. The ZR2S quietly clattering diesel, 3,500 more than the gas V6, is a perfect tool for this work. The tug of torque easily moving the truck's bulk up and over all that it encounters once the boost has built. It's only out on the highway that the 2.8 liter feels flat, the accelerator pedal needing to be pegged to make even a leisurely pass. RV Box verified the diesel's casual approach to speed, reporting times of 9.1 seconds to 60 miles per hour and 16.9 seconds through the quarter mile. But our 20 mpg fuel economy over high terrain and against strong headwinds offers some compensation coming around a bend in Big Indian. We spotted a rectangular hole in the primordial clay chunli layer framed by aging timbers. A derelict electric train on rails snaked out of the darkness as if hauling another load to the ore hopper. We picked our way down to the weedy side on an even rougher track, finally finding a boulder the ZR2 couldn't subdue without scraping the protective rocker rails that are part of the package. Written in faded paint on the side of the train Udex Exploration Company it was the name stain devised by merging the words Udon Texas. We had found Mi Vida.